Hey crew, I thought I would make a quick video here. I got a couple things I wanted to talk to you about. Um, the first of which is uh, the death of the Queen of England. Um, and I uh, ran across, well, first of all, you know, when I heard that she wasn't doing well, you know, my first thought was, well, thank goodness for her, you know. Uh, hopefully she can pass away and be happy and contented and and we can move on uh, from her long life. And, and Sarah and I talked a lot about, uh, you know, it's easy to criticize somebody who has power and money, but we tend to be less appreciative of the good things they do. And I think, you know, Queen Elizabeth in 70 plus years as queen just did a lot of really amazing things. Actually, a lot of what is amazing about her is what she didn't do about her her restraint and her willingness to rise above politics and try to um, try to really be a stabilizing force for the world and for the British people and all the Commonwealth. Um, and there's plenty of things she did wrong. Lots of things you could critique her for, but it's hard to argue that she didn't dedicate her entire life to the good of her people and her country. Um, and it's hard to imagine somebody who provided more service to their country than she did um, from a very early age. So, and it's actually really interesting uh, in some ways, um, I think you know, the future of the monarchy in England uh, may be better than people kind of thought 20 years ago or even 10 years ago. Um, you know, I suspect that Charles is going to be equally sort of stayed and, and uh, constrain his activities, although it could be wrong. And, and maybe even... You know, it looks like William is kind of cut from the same cloth as well. Who knows? I mean, I'm not an expert in the British monarchy, but um, it's hard to not appreciate what Queen Elizabeth did in the sweep of her life anyway. And um, if you get a chance to look it up, I um, there's this YouTube channel I watch a lot of videos on, and it's called Unheard. I think I've passed some on. It's U-N-H-E-R-D. And they've got like a seven minute video where this guy goes to a church, a church of England in London. Um, and he went there because they were going to do a service praying for the queen. And uh, her death, the announcement of her death came down just right before the service. And it's a very poignant uh, video. It's a, it's a remarkable sort of insight into the culture and the relevance of... Um, of the monarchy in the UK. Um, and I thought it was interesting. I don't know if you'll look it up. Anyway, that was the first thing I wanted to talk about. Um, just mention, uh, the second thing is that you told me about the, um, docu-series on Netflix about F1, Formula One. And I've kind of followed F1, uh, sort of surficially, for the last few years, I know about uh, Lewis Hamilton, um, and I can't remember the guy, Nico, uh, who was his teammate when he was with Mercedes still, um, who actually beat him for the for the World Championship and then retired. Um, and also I've watched um, the, the movie with uh, Chris Helmsworth about Nicky Lauda. Um, and I think, I can't remember his first name, but Hunt was the British guy that, that Helmsworth played, um, which was a really, I thought it was a good movie. Um, so I've, I've been, you know, peripherally aware of what's going on in F1, and I, I watch occasional videos and read, read articles and kind of follow the standings. Um, but I watched the entire first season of that on Netflix, and I... I enjoyed it. Actually, I found it super engaging and interesting, but I'm not going to watch um, any of the rest of it, I think. And the main reason is that I just found, 
I found that the, the people just to be largely jerks, honestly. And, you know, I liked the Australian driver, um, Daniel Ricardo. Um, and, uh, you know, I kind of liked some of the other characters, but, you know, um, Max Verstappen, you know, I knew, I knew that he'd won, uh, F1 last year. I knew he was way ahead this year. Um, but, you know, it's interesting to see him in 2018 as a 20, as a 19 year old coming up. And he reminds you a lot of Nikki Lauda's character or, or they, I guess it's in that movie. I mean, supposedly that's a, it's based on the true story of Nikki Lauda, but, um, uh, you know, this sort of arrogant jerk. But, um, the thing about him was that, uh, I mean, the way that Nikki Lauda is is portrayed, he at least appreciated the competitors and um, and was sort of a realist about it. And Max Verstappen was just like, seems like an arrogant jerk. And most of, uh, actually, I think Lewis Hamilton comes across a lot as an arrogant jerk. But he seems like really, really kind and kind of compassionate compared to... Um, most of those guys and you know that the things where you know that you've got multiple uh uh of the race car drivers are you know there because somebody paid money to get them there and that just how oh, it just you know it just annoys the heck out of me uh it makes uh, it makes me not want to watch the sport it makes me just annoyed with the way everything goes and i don't know you know i, I prefer and maybe it's a stupid unrealistic idealism about sort of a the the thing that used to really appeal to be about watching MLS um soccer uh you know American soccer was that there was this sort of idealism among the athletes uh and I guess that's a that's a, cynically I you could say that's a way of saying they're they're not getting paid they're not good enough to make real money um but um you know that that's what appeals to me about um hurling you know in some ways that still that sort of uh the the ascendancy of of skill and beauty and love of the game and you know in some ways the f1 it's like it's all about technical details and who is the most selfish and um is willing to give up everything else in their lives for competition. And you could say the same thing about like Michael Jordan and Tiger Woods. But I think, you know, you look at those guys and, you know, they're just not guys that you'd want. I mean, you appreciate um, their ability to do things no one else can do. Um, but, you know, you feel like, you know, there's only 20 drivers in, in F1. And if even if only two of them are there uh, because somebody paid their way, which likely it's more than that. It just kind of taints the whole thing. It's like that's that's a huge percentage of people, and they're there where somebody's buying the fastest car they can buy, and, you know, I don't know. I mean, there's a certain amount of skill in the driving, but you just got to wonder when, you know, you've got a billionaire there buying a seat for his son. You know, you've got a, a the, the Mexican driver who's, who's clearly not as talented as the young French guy and gets the seat because he's got a sponsor from Mexico who's going to give a bunch of money to the team. And you're just like, that's, that's, uh, it's unfortunate. So anyway, uh, I was kind of soured on that. I enjoyed watching it, but I moved on. Hope you're enjoying Welcome to Wrexham. Uh, I actually, I think two more episodes came out this week and I haven't seen them yet. Or maybe at least one. I don't. I don't know. I'm not following too closely, but Sarah and I need to watch that. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Hope you're having a a better day than uh, Her Majesty the Queen of England. Rest in peace. <laughs>